Hey there, this is Raja from Charger Games and welcome back to this video. I know a lot of you want to learn how to move your objects in mobile devices using touch inputs. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it in the simplest way and the fastest way. So if you want to learn, I hope you're really excited. Let's get started. So here inside my sprites folder, I have an image of this cute little panda. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop it on our hierarchy. Now we're going to go to the scale tool and change its scale to 0.5 in the X and 0.5 in the Y as well so that it becomes like this. Then we can simply move it down somewhere like this. Alright, now we're going to go to our main camera and change the color to something warm or funny or something that looks more positive than black. So something like this should be okay. So now what we want to do is, when the game runs in our mobile device, basically what we want to do is when we touch the left part of our mobile device screen, we want this object to move towards left. So when we touch to the left, we want this to be like this. And when we touch towards the right part of our mobile screen, we want this to go like this. Okay, so this is what we basically want. So we want to move this object using left and right touching on our mobile device. So for that, I'm going to go inside my scripts folder and create a new C-sharp script and I'm going to name this one touch move tutorial. Now I'm going to select my panda and drag and drop the touch move tutorial script on it and then double click to open it in Visual Studio. So here we have our script. All right. So now first thing we need is we need to have a move speed value by which we can move our player. So here we're going to create public float move speed variable and make sure to create a public variable because we want to actually change its values from the editor. All right. Now here we're going to create a separate function for touch movement so that we can use that to move our player. So here we're going to write void touch move. Now if you want you can also write it directly inside the update or fixed update but in this case, we want to write all our code inside the touch move so that you can simply use the function and call it from anywhere to move your object using touch inputs. Or let's say you have multiple types of inputs in your game. So you have one function inside which you write the code for keyboard inputs, another one you write for the touch move, and you can use any of them depending on where you are using it. Okay. Now, in order to use the touch movement, let's see how we can do that. First of all, we need to actually get the position where we are touching. Now, I want to say that in this case, we are not going to use the actual touch functionalities of Unity. We're going to use the mouse input functionalities in Unity because the mouse inputs work directly as touch inputs without any problem. Now, some of you might say that this is not the correct way to do this, but this works and it, if it works in your case, you should definitely use it because it's easy to use and it works perfectly. All right. So first of all, we need to detect whether we have pressed a finger on the screen. Okay. And in order to detect that, we need to say if input dot get mouse button zero. All right. So you need to make sure that you write get mouse button and not button down or button up because button down is called whenever you click your button and button up is called when you receive or not receive when you leave your button okay but this get mouse button function gets called as long as you keep pressing your button or as long as you keep touching on the screen so in this case that's what we want to do we want to we want to check how long the player is touching on the screen and during that time we want to move our player so here we are detecting the zeroth mouse button whether we have pressed it and this is similar to touching on the screen Okay, so this code works for clicking the mouse as well as pressing on the screen. So both of these works. Okay, so this will return true as long as you have pressed your mouse or kept touching on the screen. Okay, so now that we have got to know whether we are pressing on the screen or not, now we need to know where we are actually pressing on the screen. Whether we are pressing on the left direction or on the left side of the screen or we are pressing on the right side of our screen. In order to detect that, first of all, we need to get the mouse position. So here we're going to say vector3 
mouse pose so this is a new variable inside which we're going to store our mouse position now in order to use the mouse position in our actual project we need to convert it from screen point to world point so by default unity gives us the mouse position in the screen coordinates but if we want to use it in our game we need to convert it into world coordinates okay in the world coordinates the center is zero and the left is negative and the right is positive that's what we want to detect so that's why we need to convert our mouse position into world coordinates to do that we're gonna say camera dot main dot screen to world point and write it exactly as I have written otherwise it will give you errors and this is the function that we need and inside the function we need to simply pass our mouse position so here we're gonna say input dot mouse position okay so now this function will take our mouse position and convert it from screen to world coordinate and then return the mouse position inside this mouse pose variable so now inside the mouse pose variable we have access to our mouse position now we need to detect whether the mouse position or the touch position is currently on the left of our screen or on the right of our screen so let me go to unity and uh, a little bit give you a little demonstration so that you can understand what I'm talking about so currently as you can see here we have our panda and in the world coordinates this is the center part of our screen now the left axis the left and right axis is the X axis and that's why we want to move our player so we want to move our player like this and this now if this is the center then if the player is touching anywhere on the left of the center like here 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 then we want to move our player to the left and if it is touching on the right side of our screen anywhere like this 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 we want to move our player to the right direction so if this is the zero this is the center then this one will be negative one negative two negative three negative four like this and this one will be positive one positive two positive three positive four like this so we need to check if the touch position is less than zero that is it is minus negative one negative two or anything like that then we're gonna move it to the left and if it is greater than zero that is if it is one two three four then we're gonna move our player to the right so that's what we're gonna do so let's go ahead and double click to open our script again and here we're gonna say if mouse pose dot x that means if the x position of our mouse is less than okay first of all let's say if greater than 0 0.2 f 0 0.2 but you can also say if greater than 1 that means if it is greater than 1 that means whether we are pressing on the right side of our screen then we need to simply move right okay else if mouse pose dot x is less than negative 1 then we're gonna move left as simple as that now we need to simply say how do we want to move it to the right and how we want to move it to the left now there are various ways by which you can move if you are using physics you can use velocity otherwise you can use translate function you can use the transform dot position to move it directly so in this case we're going to use the easiest way that is transform dot translate function so for moving to the right we're going to say transform dot translate translate and now here we need to pass how much we want to move in the x y and z direction so here we want to move only in the x axis and on the right side that is in the positive axis that's why here we're gonna say move speed so in the x axis we want to move by this move speed amount in the y axis we're gonna move zero in the z axis we're gonna move zero so by this code our player will be moved to the right side with this move speed whenever we are pressing on the right side of our screen the same way if we simply copy this code and paste it here when we want to move to the left we simply need to make the move speed value to negative and that's it so just by making the move speed value to negative now our player will move in the negative direction in the x-axis okay so now our code is ready our touch move function is ready all we need to do is call this touch move function from our update or fixed update function so in this case I'm gonna call it from the fixed update function so void fixed update and inside this I'm gonna call this touch move function alright 
So now this function will get called again and again and it will check whether we are pressing and where we are pressing and depending on that it will move our player left and right. So let me go ahead and save the script and go back to Unity. And here we're going to now test how this thing is working. Now before testing, we need to make sure we add a speed value to this panda. So here let's say I give a speed value of 0 0.5. And now I can click on play. And now you will see when I press the left side of the screen, it moves to the left. When I press the right side of the screen, it moves to the right. And this doesn't only work for mouse, it works for touch as well. So whether you are using a mobile device or a tablet, anything that you want, this will work similarly in all the cases. Now if you press on the center, you will see nothing will happen because in our code we have written that the click or the position will be, the position should be at least greater than positive one or less than negative one. Otherwise this code will not work or it will not detect the clicks or move the player. Okay. So now that you can see the code is working, now I'm going to also show you how this works in the mobile device by using the device simulator so that you can see how it works. So let me go to the device simulator and in your case if you don't have the device simulator you need to actually install it from the package manager and I will create a separate video on that so don't worry about it. I'm going to create a separate video on that and I'm going to choose the Redmi Note 7 for this and I'm going to rotate it just like this and now if I click on play and now let me wait for it to load and now as you can see in the device simulator as well I can press the left and right and the panda moves to left and right just like this okay so as you can see our code is working for mobile device as well and this is working here as well so this is the simplest way to do it simplest way to actually code the movement now some of you might argue that this is not the perfect way to do touch inputs and that's that's quite true but if it works for your project and if it doesn't give any errors then you should use it because it's the easiest way to do it you don't need to deal with touch arrays and all that stuff because this thing works all right and you can do the same thing inside update function so as you can see if i open the script here as you can see i have done it inside the fixed update function i have called it inside the fixed update function but if you want to call it inside the update function you can do so as well but in that case you need to simply multiply your move speed with time dot delta time okay so let me show you how to do that you can simply copy this code paste it here comment it out from here and here after the move speed you need to multiply it with time dot delta time the same way you need to multiply this one with time dot delta time and this is it so this way your code will work in the update function as well now you need to go back to unity and simply change the move speed value and make it a higher value so that it works perfectly in your case so here inside the move speed i'm going to make it let's say 10 and let's see how this works and now you will see with the 10 value it works like this and it works pretty good okay so this way you can use it in the update or fixed update anywhere that you want uh, according to your project and which one, whichever one gives you the correct results thank you so much for checking out this video i hope you really enjoyed and learned a lot so go ahead and use it in your own projects and build some more cool things so if you enjoyed this video and learned something please hit the like button so that i can make more videos about it and let me know in the comments down below what do you like to watch more in the next videos and if you like the tutorial let me know in the comments as well thank you so much for watching this is raja and i'm gonna see you in a new video tomorrow